Welcome to the Real Estate Baller Show. There are countless ways to build wealth. My vehicle of choice happened to be real estate. Specifically, I focus on buying, selling single family homes, and building a rental portfolio. On this channel, you won't find me flaunting rented Lamborghinis or partying on yachts. I've done well in real estate and I'm only getting better. Could I retire today and live comfortably? Without a doubt, but I'm not done yet. I'm here to learn alongside you and share everything I've learned in real estate. Let's grow together. Hey Ben, it's so good to have you on the Real Estate Baller Show today. How is your day? Hey, doing a, doing incredible. Just super excited. Anytime I get to speak with you, V, or see you in person, always grateful for that. So uh, yeah, super excited to be here. Hey, just for that alone, I'm glad we invited you on today. I like to okay. get buttered up as much as I can, right? <laughs> hey, that's right. Any any room that I'm in and you're there, I know I'm in the right room. So that's why, you know, anytime I get to spend with you, I'm always grateful for that. But yeah, super excited. Oh, you being so sweet. I I I always enjoy talking to you. We run into each other throughout, you know, different events and all the all. And it's always um I love your energy and I love your professionalism, you know, and and, and I, I think you care a great deal about what you do. Um, so thank you for being on the show again, and, um, let's, um, try to provide value to our audience through this discussion that we're going to have, right? Um, so where are you from? Where am I from? Uh, yeah, great question. I'm, uh, I'm actually from Colorado originally, so born and raised in Colorado. Uh, I grew up outside of Denver in Aurora and, uh, did my college schooling, you know, Colorado State. And then I went and graduated uh, from there, spent 13 years out in California, and then uh, ended up a uh, short layover in Las Vegas. And then I moved to Houston uh, almost nine years ago in August. So, um, but yeah, Colorado originally. All right. So I actually lived in Fort Collins for five years. I know exactly where Aurora is. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, my favorite memory was when we got snowed in and we went to the backyard and scooped snow and make margaritas. I don't. <laughs> but you lived there recently. You lived there, you know, when you're. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. When I was young. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So you're from Colorado. So now, you know, tell us who's who. Who's been deal? Yeah, uh, so I lived down here in Houston, Texas. Um, moved down here not like I said nine years ago. Uh, just who I am. I'm a you know a believer. I'm a follower of Christ. I'm a husband and I'm a father. And uh, you know that's how I define myself. It's how I prioritize prioritize my life. Um, I've got three beautiful girls, uh, all under the age of seven: a seven year old, a four year old, and uh, almost two year old. So you know, always receiving, open to receiving prayers. Any insight, guidance, wisdom in uh, raising girls in the world that we're in. But uh, yeah, just super excited. Um, my background in general, uh, I've been in the sales and business development world ever since I graduated from college. Uh, so started in Fortune 500, went to startups, everything in between. Um, I'm, in my industry backgrounds, super diverse as well. So supply chain, transportation, logistics, uh, alternative energy, uh, natural gas. That's what brought me down to Houston. Uh, so some energy connection. I've also worked in solar and, uh, just how always have had a very diverse background, but it's always been in sales, business development. But really, like you said at the beginning, it's like, I just have a heart to serve and care for people, uh, be of value, be of service. Uh, so yeah, that's why I'm so grateful. I love real estate. I uh, got into real estate nine years ago and, uh, yeah, just things have never been the same since. So super excited. All right, so let's talk about your love for real estate. When did you develop the love for real estate? And was it love at first sight or was it like, you know, took a little dance? 
<laughs> yeah, I think it's always a it's always a dance. Um, I was talking with a group of agents yesterday and uh, really talked about how real estate, you know, being 100 percent entrepreneurship, it's really an opportunity to ex- exercise your faith, exercise your resilience, you know, and if this is something that you really want to do, because uh, when you get into the real estate business, the numbers are really aren't in, aren't in your favor in terms of like staying in the business. So just like you, V, you've been in the business a very long time. Uh, I'm a licensed real estate agent in Texas. I'm an investor agent. And just the numbers on the agent side, one out of four agents make it through their first year. A one out of 10 make it to year five. And on the investment side where we've connected, I believe that number is probably like 10X, 20X, 100X, because there'll be people that'll come to the real estate investing events that we come to And many of those will never do a deal. They'll never come back. They'll never stay in the business for more than a year, five, or let alone as, you know, let alone as long as you've been in the business and I have. And uh, a lot of the people that we know uh, just that can have the fortitude and the commitment. But um, the, I just love real estate because I know it's the path to wealth. It's the path to financial freedom. It's foundational. It's, if you look at any of the people that have created financial success in the life, in their life, Real estate is always a big part or in the mix of their creating the wealth. And so uh, it all started with like a rich dad, poor dad class when my wife was pregnant. Uh, Like literally eight years ago, we found ourselves at a rich dad, poor dad event out at the Bush Intercontinental Marriott. And uh, we spent the weekend out there. And uh, it was it was a real important time because I was in my corporate job. I knew the corporate world banging around in the corporate world. Even though I was making good money, I was, I've always been a top producer, president's club or whatever. I uh, always was just hitting ceilings where there was always some sort of cap that you would come up against, whether it was financial cap, you know, not getting paid in respect to the value that I felt like I was creating for the company, um, dealing with egos of managers and bosses and the hierarchy of the corporate world. And uh, I just knew real estate was going to be that place where I could start exercising and obtaining you know, freedom in that space. So for me, it's a quest for, you know, financial freedom uh, it, because it's a proven path. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to, uh, I, I, my calling, I just want to be able to live out my calling and my purpose without any financial restriction. And I know uh, real estate is the way to accomplish that. Are you sure about that? Because there are many people who struggle in real estate. <laughs> oh, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the, like you said, the odds are against you. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's the thing. It's like you know, I've been in the business for eight or nine years. Um, there's only you know the the circles get smaller and smaller. Just like you know, like you, V. I I know you've been in the business you know a long time as well. It's just when you yeah ten years. You're a rookie, but it felt like just yesterday. I was calling myself a rookie, and here I am. You know, I guess the term now is season in bed. Yeah. <laughs> many yeah. got many ba- battle scars and obviously it comes with some privilege as well right mm-hmm. Pre- a lot of benefits upside yeah oh yeah for sure yeah so yeah go ahead so take us back to that first transactions that you were involved in oh man my first transaction um let's see so I guess all my the way our journey started, like when we took that class, um, the entry way to get into real estate investing uh, is through wholesaling, and so that's kind of the lowest barrier of entry. You know, where you can put in invest a lot of time, energy, and effort into the business without the financial commitment necessarily. So uh, we went out and started door knocking pre foreclosures, um, and that was in the summer. That, like I said, eight years ago, hot. My wife's pregnant. We're driving around door knocking. Uh, pre foreclosures on Saturday and Sundays, um, and I just you know we've got we got a couple properties under contract, but we were never able to get them to close. Um, and what I realized was uh, I needed to leverage my background and experience uh, in sales and business development. So I went to go work uh, with a uh, with a startup wholesaling company. So that's really how I got started. Um, I don't even know if I remember. I don't even know if I remember my first deal specifically. I, I know I've got plenty of memorable deals, uh, but my first deal, I know it took a while. So like real estate, even with my background and like going through sales and working with people, 
even getting into an environment with like a wholesaling, I, I became an acquis acquisition specialist. Uh, so I was working with um, a team and I was the guy that would actually go out and meet the homeowner and evaluate their needs and put the solution together and put the property under contract. So that's what I specialized in. Uh, but I know it took like probably 60 days uh, before I got my first contract. And I think the guys, I was literally on the fence of like, is this guy going to make it or not? And I kept showing up and I kept going on appointments. I kept like trying to work this thing so I could get better at it because uh, it is an art and a science and it's different because you're dealing with people that are in, you know, pretty challenging situations. So um, I can't tell you the first deal that I've got, but I know it definitely took some time to ramp up to it. Just getting the feel and getting the confidence and then getting that first contract in was super important. It feel like it's been so long ago, Ben, that you were with that company. Are they still in business? That's a great question. Um, I believe the guys I worked with, I think they're still circulating around. I don't know if the company in name is still around, but um, I believe they're uh, one of the two guys is still active. So it's kind of validating the point that you said earlier about this industry, about how much of a turnover we see, right? I mean, making it one year, making it, you know, two, three, four, five. I mean, this company was like the one of the biggest in town for a while. And I'm sad. I hope they stay around, you know, because they, they did provide a lot of value for the community, in my opinion. Um, yeah. But anyway, so fast forward, um, you've been in how many transactions now? Yeah, so it's a couple hundred transactions. Um, so that's the combination of my, you know, investment investment life and uh, with my retail business. So, um, you know, when I was a acquisition specialist on the wholesaling side, I've literally met with thousands of homeowners. And so, um, going out, sitting with people in their homes, and doing that. So, literally thousands of times, going on those appointments, bought it, put a couple hundred properties under contract. Um, so yeah, it's been a long, long journey, uh, a lot of opportunity, a lot of people that I've been able to help that I'm, uh, been super grateful, uh, grateful for, and, uh, still continuing to, you know, work deals. I think that's always part of the challenge and the blessing with real estate. It is transactional. Uh, so, you know, it's always one deal to the next. So the challenge is how do you continue to build the cons consistency and stack enough activity where those deals are always coming in? So. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, been kind of the journey so far, but lots of deals, lots of people. Um, so yeah, it's been great. So through all of these deals that you've been involved with, I think that you have found your niche in this space. Tell us about that. Yeah, so um, where where I just kind of feel my calling and where I really enjoy is uh, being in this world of what I call an investor agent. So an investor agent is someone that invests, that they're a licensed investor, they're an a, a real estate agent that works with investors. So it's at this integration of being an agent and an investor. Um, I think one of the things I know, V, when early on and when I was in the wholesaling side of the business, a lot of people like kind of had this myth that, hey, if you uh, are a wholesaler, you're a real estate investor, you don't want to get licensed. Uh, because it's going to restrict and limit what you can do in your real estate investing business. And just based on my experience and based on what I know and who I know, uh, it's totally not true. It's like the biggest myth in the real estate investing game is getting licensed is going to restrict your business. Uh, what I've found, in fact, it exponentially provides an opportunity to expand your business. Uh, because like, even if we take a look at all the time that I invested when I was an acquisitions agent, hunting for the transaction, if I would have had the shift, uh, like my buddy Ricky Kruth talks about, where you focus on the relationship and not the transaction, you focus on building a relationship with the homeowner, uh, man, my life and business would look ra radically different because if I would have taken advantage of those opportunities and the homeowners, those thousands of home homeowners that I met with, to really try to be of service with them and build a long lasting relationship where I became that go-to real estate agent or person for them, uh, things would look crazy different right now. But at that time, I was just really grinding and looking to get the contract and you know create an income for myself and my family. 
Uh, but yeah, where I love right now is being at this intersection of being an investor and an agent, uh, part of an incredible team and community. Um, you know, and my question, just to wrap the, you know, investor agent getting licensed deal. Um, I just ask you and ask, you know, anybody that's listening to, to this, like, who are the top real estate investors that, you know, in town or in your community and are they licensed or not? Cause I know all the top real estate Im investors that I know they've all, they're all licensed or they have been licensed at some point. And that doesn't mean they're an active transacting like realtor, like they're listing houses and all that, but they've got that license as a critical tool for their business. Um, and that's the whole reason why I'm working with the group that I'm with, you know, with Chris Bounds and Bram Phillips, you know, two of the top real estate investors uh, that I found as I was navigating the entire ecosystem here in Houston. Uh, they were the guys that were men of integrity, faith. They've created wealth in real estate. They're still doing the business. They've been doing it for 12 and 18 years. Uh, incredible value to the marketplace. Reputation precedes them. And those were guys that I just wanted to, you know, be close to and circle, you know, get in proximity with. And so uh, that's just where I found the opportunity to be an investor agent, you know, so powerful. And that's where I'm connected to actively building a team and a community uh, of investor agents. So yeah, still doing business, still doing deals, still, you know, wholesaling, ident identifying uh, investment opportunities and helping people build their business working with investors. So to your point, I am also licensed, um, you know, and I got licensed very early on on my journey. Like I think within a few months into knowing that this is what I'm going to do, I got my license. And and there are certain restrictions since, you know, with having the license, right, um, you do have to operate within the law of the license. <laughs> um mm -hmm. Uh, but I would have to say the benefit of having the license outweigh the, you know, not having a license. Tell us more. So I'm an investor. I, I am looking to get into this space. Historically, or, you know, there are some myths out there that I should not work with a real estate agent, a licensed agent, to find investor deal. But let's talk about that, right? Because I think there's something we also need to clear up is that there is, for a long time, real estate agents do not understand what it's like to work with investor and had a bad taste in their mouth and had bad, ne you know, have negativity, negative feeling about investor. So I think we should address you know, the change, right? I, I think over the year, the, the real estate agents now realize the value of the investor and also understand more, have more understanding and knowledge. So let's talk about that for a minute. What's your experience in that, you know, your thought? Yeah, so the investor agent like relationship, one, you're absolutely right. Uh, there's a lot of real estate agents, even in Houston, there's like, what, 30,000 real estate agents, a very small percentage of them understand the real estate investing side of the business, which I believe is a massive, you know, miss on their part. Because if you're, if you're a real estate agent or a realtor operating and you're not investing in real estate, or you're not aware of what's happening in the investment side, you're missing a ton of opportunities to invest yourself just by the numbers and how deals come, you know, come and go through just being in the marketplace. But um, being an investor, working with an investor agent can become an incredible asset for you. Uh, there's a number of things that you can leverage working with an investor agent, you know, like, like myself or even with you, if, you know, in that capacity, um, one, it's leveraging their knowledge, experience, and expertise. Um, and that looks like a whole lot of things. So like on my side specifically, I'm a deal acquisition specialist, like, I know how to identify and analyze deals and get the right deals done at the right price. Um, because uh, the one thing I will say is like, you know, if you are an investor, the best deals are always the deals you're going to find yourself. So what that means is you, there's a lot of marketing that you're going to have to do to, you know, really generate those deals. Otherwise, the next best place to go is going to be to work with an investor agent, somebody that's got relationships uh, off market, like in the off market ecosystem where, like you and I, that's how we've got connected. 
we've invested a lot of time, energy, and effort into the community to uh, establish and build relationships, sift and sort, discern who's who's doing it, who's not, who you're in alignment with or not. Because the cool thing about real estate is you get to choose who you work with. So I get to choose, you know, to work with UV or Eddie or whoever, like companies that we know, good, bad, and different. There's a lot of places that we can go that's available to us. And, you know, it becomes more of a relationship, uh, a relationship driven business, you know, on this side, especially with, you know, people that have been in the business for a while. So you get to leverage those connections, those resources, those referrals, like I know you, we can get people connected with the right lenders or with the right, you know, appraisers or whoever that may be in the inspectors, construction companies, plumbers, HVAC trades. Like we, I already have that established because we've got relationships with those businesses that have, because of a proven track record, like I'm not going to refer a business that isn't reflective of the excellence that I want to hold and maintain in my business because they become an extension of my business. So you working with an investor agent, you get to leverage that experience, that expertise, those relationships. You also get to leverage our time. So with investor agents, like I get paid when a deal closes. So, you know, whether I'm securing a deal off market or on market, like you're not paying me up front as an investor transactionally to go out and do a lot of work. Like I'm going to do a lot of legwork to understand what it is you're looking for, where you're looking to buy it, what your terms are, all of that stuff. Like I'm going to be doing all the sifting and sorting instead of you having to go out to the entire investing real estate ecosystem and be overwhelmed by all of this information, all of these crazy deals that can come at you. I can help narrow that down and focus, you know, get you the deals that you're looking for more efficiently. Uh, Because honestly, a lot of the investors I work with, um, they're not the investors that you and I see, you know, day to day that are at the events. I'm working with people that want to invest in real estate. I'm working with people that have capital. They've got money. They want to start building their portfolio. They want to start building uh, rentals. They want to get into the business to create wealth. So yes, I do want, I do, and I want to work with, um, you know, investors that are active doing flips and all that. And I'm also looking to help people that are specifically looking to invest in real estate that don't have the time to go through or the patience to go to all the events that can be super overwhelming to do all the sifting and sorting. I really want to work with a curated group of people that are looking to create wealth in real estate. And then I'm their go-to person for the deal acquisitions to help them get the deal done so they can start building more efficiently. So, um, you know, that's, that's really kind of the two big areas that I focus on. Like I know I've got expertise, you know, in my experience, especially on the deal acquisition side. And, uh, you know, we've, I don't need to hear any more horror stories. I don't need to be a part of any more horror stories. I don't want my clients to experience any of those horror stories. Uh, and it's an opportunity for, you know, you as an investor to leverage, someone with my type of experience, expertise, background, uh, you know, in my time, you know, to help you do what you want to do in the business. So. So just to sum it up, if, uh, if someone got cash and want to get into a real estate space, like want to build their rental portfolio, I wouldn't say jump in to do a fix and flip off, you know, it's maybe too much. It is more beneficial to work with an agent, especially someone with a background like yours, you know, who understand the investment side of the business uh, and the real estate, the transactional side of the real estate. That's about sum up what we said. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I like I said, with when you've been in the business as long as you and I have, um, we know what to look for. And like, I know when somebody's getting into the business and, you know, they're going to have a learning experience that's going to be very expensive. I mean, I've got a, a new investor. It was actually a, a group of contractors that were working with one of the top investors in town where I was his primary agent. Like I worked with a guy that had um, he, 150 rentals, uh, lending company, like hard money lending company, home buying franchise. Um, and I was his primary agent. And so I got to see, you know, inside and outside what it looked like, you know, for what that size of operation looks like, but also, you know, learn from those deals, the ones that were good, the ones that were bad and, you know, kind of what to look for. So um, there's a lot that I can bring to the table and just working with an investor agent in general, 
just to help save you a lot of pain, save you a lot of money. You know, I don't want you to get into a bad deal. Um, and so unfortunately, that's still what we see, like people that are super excited uh, which is great. They want to get into the business. They want to take action, you know, put into work a lot of the information that they may have acquired through education or whatever. Um, and, you know, a lot of people that get into the business, they're out of it, you know, on their first deal because they get into the, they buy the deal at the wrong price. They get a bad contractor that rips them off. You know, the, it ends up costing them money. Like they, you know, impacts their credit, their financial life. Like there's a ton of things that can happen. Um, and you know, it's my goal to not have that happen to the, you know, people that I work with and, you know, and I also offer up, you know, my feedback, whether people want to listen to me or not. Um, cause I don't work with every investor and I, I've seen plenty where it's like, yeah, I don't know, you know, provide them with the information, let them make the decision that's going to be best for them and their business. But it's part of real estate. It's a wild, it's the wild west. And now a quick word from today's sponsor. I've been asked a lot about passive investment. And I understand that there's nothing passive about being a landlord unless you find a great property management company. If you own an Airbnb or a vacation rental or a short-term rental in the Galveston, Houston, Seabrook area and you want to free up your time, contact our team at Bus Vacation Rental at 281-549-8432 or visit our website at busvacationrentals.com. Thank you. And now back to the Real Estate Baller Show. So in most most of your transactions, do you, are you uh, on the buy side or the sales side? I'm on both. I'm on both. So uh, that's why uh, even if there's realtors that are out there, that's why I love working with investors because... Uh, the number of transactions is higher. So typically I'm on the buy and the sell side or I'm on the buy and the listing side. There's multiple transactions that are tied to one deal. Um, so the frequency of the transaction is up um, and the consistency of the transactions are up. So I've got investors that are looking to buy one one rental a year, one property a year or one a quarter, or I've got a couple that are buying like 10 a year. And so like, if you just look at the volume and the frequency of purchase, working with an investor that far outweighs working with a traditional homeowner that's buying one home every five to seven years. Like even if I've got one investor that's buying one property once a year, that for me is worth five times than the traditional homeowner, just from a volume standpoint, the frequency of purchase. And so um, that consistency is just uh, been foundational for me, you know, in the business and just for my sanity. I mean, that's why I go out and talk with a lot of real estate agents. And I just say, hey, I believe the key to success in real estate is by working with investors and building a foundation of your business, working with investors, and then you build your sphere of influence on top of that. So it's just, if you want consistency uh, of people that are always buying, regardless of the market, regardless of the rates, regardless of the time of year, investors are always buying. So wouldn't you want to work with investors and work with all the people that are in your sphere? So, um, but yeah, that's... Well, Ben, you may have more competition coming your way because all the real estate agents who are listening to this podcast, this episode is going to say, you make, you make sense. I'm going to quit working with retail homeowner and just go work with investor because you're so right. I mean... On an average, how many times a homeowner is going to buy or sell a house versus investor, right? And if you understand how to work with this investor, if you understand their objective and help them through it, you get repeat business. You don't have to go out and grind to get new business all the time. Yep. Yeah, and that's why we've got, yeah, and we've got we, what we call the investor agent game plan. And so we literally lay out the process of what it looks like to build a business working with investors and, you know, with your retail business on top, because it's not one or the other. It's not, I'm just working with investors and this, um, you miss a lot of opportunity just by focusing on one. So it's really about, you know, doing both. So being an investor agent, I'm working both sides. Like I'm absolutely going to sell my neighbor's house down the street. Uh, cause that's one of the things that people, when they get into the real estate business, especially on the wholesaling side, 
They're like, yeah, I'd love to make a wholesale deal of 10 grand. I'm like, well, what do you think would be easier? Going through the whole process of finding one property to get under contract that you may wholesale for 10 grand or buying your, helping someone buy or sell a $350,000 house. Like the frequency and the opportunity is way higher just helping a friend, family member, somebody you go to church with, you know, buy or sell a 350, like an average medium price house in Houston, then try to go through and build the entire marketing machine, you know, that it, to find a distressed homeowner that can potentially turn into a wholesale deal. By the way, a five figure wholesale deal, you know, if you're getting into the business is essentially like hitting a home run based on my experience. A lot of your first wholesale deals typically, you know, break even three, couple thousand bucks, three, four, five grand. If you'd step in, do your first wholesale deals, you know, in five figures, like that's a massive success based on what I know. What I know. Well, speaking of wholesaling, we're sidetracking here, but since you were talking numbers, I, I think wholesale, when you have to, and you don't have a way of mean to close the deal. Me, I personally believe that if you have the, the capital, the mean, it is a calculated risk. Take the deal down, you know, sell it. The numbers look way more promising on the other side if you buy it right. I mean, if you can wholesale it for a wholesale fee, the chances are you probably bought it at the right number. Right. Yes. So, yep. um, but that's on the wholesale. So, mm -hmm. I'm sure, I mean, things happen. And you've probably been involved in transactions or a deal that gone bad. Give us one, two. Deal gone bad. Uh, well, I mean, I can talk about one that's kind of active that we're closing next week. Um, and it's, uh, it's a good s story and kind of a cautionary tale of, um, you know, one, who you work with and then who you're partnered with. Uh, to know exactly what it is you need to do to have success. Um, so the the investors that I'm working with, they were the contractor for the big investor uh, that I spoke about earlier. And they were like, hey, we can do this on our own. You know, instead of working with this guy, we're just kind of grinding out the construction side. Why don't we start doing our own projects and our deals? And um, instead of going like, if you use a baseball analogy, instead of like trying to shoot for a single, double, or a triple, they tried to, you know, like, they're trying to shoot a home run. And so, you know, they took down a flip that's in Spring Branch, which is like a, you know, nicer part of town, uh, a $500,000 plus home, except the problem was where they bought the, bought the property, they didn't buy it at the right price because the other person, the other agent that they're working with gave them totally wrong numbers. So they thought the home was going to be worth like literally $100,000 more than what we're selling it at. And so um, <clears throat> that initial information um, was is totally set them off on the wrong track. The other thing that happened was they missed some of the vital components of the rehab that they did not see what else was happening in the market. What They did not match the comps that were in the market. So they built it based on what they know. They didn't build to match what was happening in the market to get that top of the market price you know, where what really was and, you know, we're selling it in the low fives instead of like, it was not a $600,000 property, but they had also missed some very important things. Like they missed the living, like a big thing in the living room, kitchen area. And then they also missed on the primary bathroom. And so they like, there's some, just some things that with a little more insight and some expertise with who they're working with, like if I would have worked with them when they started the project, they would have had a much different experience where, Unfortunately, now we're selling it just to get them out of the deal because they're taking, you know, a high five figure loss on this deal. Uh, so because and they also got into a cash. So they've got a private money guy that they're working with. They didn't have, you know, a second set of eyes from a hard money lender that I know, you know, we know plenty of hard money lenders. Uh, the value that they can bring to a deal is they actually help validate the deal to make sure it's the right kind of deal to get into. They didn't. They were in a position where they had all the cash and the capital up front. So they put all their cash and their capital in this first deal. And so um, there's just, man, I'm just, I'm grateful to help them get through it because I ended up taking over the project, you know, from the last agent that kind of set them off on the wrong course. And then I'm just helping to work with them, you know, to kind of course correct, to get them out of this deal. 
And then unfortunately they got into another deal that I'm going to have to work with them on, but you know, just to try to get them back on a path that's going to be a little more sustainable and profitable uh, for what they want to do in the business. But um, yeah, as of right now, that's the one, because for me, it's been, I don't like to have listings for a long time. Um, and this is one that I've been really having to work and grind through for a long time, just with all the hurdles uh, that I just talked about. So. Oh man, I would tell you this. I know we said it over and over and over and there is no coming back from paying too much. If you pay too much for the property, there's no coming back. You know, if you if you yep. buy the property, if you can buy it as deep as you can, because stuff happens, like things like this happen. You can miscalculate a rehab. You miscalculate your ARV uh, after repair value. And, you know, there's still room for error. But if you buy, you pay too much, there is no room for mistake. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So tell us about an impactful moment in your uh, real estate career. Uh, well, yeah. So I think the biggest thing with real estate, um, you know, the two things that I talk about, they're about community and opportunity. So who you get to work with uh, is very important for me. Uh, so from an impact standpoint, uh, being in the ecosystem and the community that, you know, we're a part of uh, is is incredible. So the people that I choose to work with and I get to learn from, get mentored by, um, there's a guy, Brian Carruthers, he just mentioned a uh, uh, an analogy, or I, I keep screwing it up, but it's called game and what he called great associations, mentors, and environment. So do you have game? And for me, it's like godly associations, mentors, and environment. And uh, I just think for me, that's the most important, like being in a commu- in that ecosystem and community uh, is super important. Um, I think the um, the other thing that I was going to say, the opportunity side uh, for me, like the biggest blessing that I've got through my investing side is the house that I live in. So this house that I live in came as a result of an appointment while I was working with uh, one of the wholesaling companies I was with. And so um, I just want to encourage everyone uh, the big lesson with that is um, anytime you have an opportunity to serve a homeowner, even if you don't think it's a deal, uh, commit and be there for that person and respect that time. Because um, without getting into the whole kind of testimony behind this house, um, I this was like five years ago, in, literally in September, um, where I had like four appointments. I was already home. Um, I had my oldest daughter at the time was like two. My wife was home. I pulled into the driveway and I had an appointment notification pop up and we were living in the Heights at the time um, in a rental. And there was this notification to come to spring for an appointment. It was four o'clock. It was like 430. I was at home and this appointment was at five in spring, which means if Houston, you got to drive through traffic, drive up north, all of that stuff. And um, I was like, hey, God just put on my heart. It's like, you've got to go. So I gave them kisses. I hopped in my car. And even though I didn't want to, even though when I looked at the deal, I knew the house was too big. I knew it wasn't a rental. It sounds like there's been too much work done to the property. It sounds like the price may, none of that mattered. Cause all that mattered was that I got here. I met with a homeowner who had an incredible connection, you know, big blessing happened where we ended up buying this house subject to with a small owner finance note. And now we've got, for what I paid for it, we, that's doubled in equity. Like my equity position is doubled in the last five years. So, you know, when we talk about the, um, you know, when we talk about the opportunities that come up, like I had no idea this was going to happen in the, in the way that God provided to me. It was just an absolute blessing. So this is my best investment deal that I've ever done is the house that I live in. Uh, and it all came from being obedient and honoring the time and the opportunity to serve a homeowner because where I was able to meet him became, I the solution became me. I became the opportunity to buy the home. And uh, it's just, yeah, it's my favorite deal, the best deal I'll ever, you know, I'll ever do most likely up till now. I'm sure there'll be plenty more to come in the future, but this one's special for sure. All right. So knowing what you know, would you ever pay full price for a house? Yeah, no, it's no, the best deals, like I said, the best deals are always the ones that you find yourself. And so, um, you know, though, that's always, 
the benefit of being on the investment side and understanding that there's this entire ecosystem of business and real estate that happens that the traditional market doesn't see. And uh, it's it's not a, an environment where we're like taking advantage of everyone. It's There's a lot of people that we're meeting some really critical and urgent needs on the investing side where there's a lot of care and compassion that is met with value uh, that we provide and on, you know, and that's where investors get the return. So a lot of people have this perception that like investors are going out and trying to lowball someone, take advantage of someone. Based on my experience with the way that I operated the business and how I provided the service and value, they, I, I worked with them exactly where they were and got them exactly what they wanted and they needed at that time. And their home, you know, they were willing to sell their home at the price that they were willing to do it at. And so that's where the value and the benefit is, is like, hey, providing the service and solution, meeting them where they are. And that benefit is where, you know, we get to, you know, get homes at a good value uh, that we can sell to other investors. We can take down ourselves and things like that. And, and well, then we need you to get to start building your own portfolio, right, Ben? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's in process. So, yeah. Well, I think there's another benefit for agent to work with investors that we maybe haven't touched on is I think the em emotional benefit. Like when you work with a homeowner, purchasing a home is an emotional decision. With an investor, it's just transactional. So you don't have to do all the babysitting, I call it, and mm -hmm. don't shoot me, but you know, <laughs> that you have to do with a homeowner, right? I mean, you could take them to show 30 houses and then they just have something emotional happen and it's done. Yeah, yeah, and that's one of the things. So when we when you talk about working with investors, it's the uh, the volume of the deals, the consistency of the deals, and then, you know, it is not an emotional. It's a financial transaction. So, you know, I become very dialed in, you know, just like you, it's like, we know exactly what they're looking for, more importantly, in the part of town. So, you know, with, with me, I only work with a handful of investors, you know, that are actively buying because I can only literally manage and keep top of mind, you know, a handful of people that I'm procuring deals for, because as you, as you know, uh, deals off market move very quick. And we've got to be able to say, identify a deal and say, all right, that, that looks like a deal for my investor. And I also have to have them primed where it is a financial decision. So it's easier for them to say yes or no, instead of doing all the deliberating that we do experience on the retail side of it is, it's an emotional purchase, you know, for someone's home that they're going to be living and raising their kids in and all that stuff. It is a much different thing. So you're absolutely right in terms of, uh, you know, that benefit of working with investors, it's financial focused. And um, the one thing with that too, that I'll add in, which is the most important part that's really big for me is that working with investors is all relationship driven. So it's built on building a relationship because just like you and I have got, got to know each other, you know, the people that the investors that I work with, it's a relationship. Like they want to see me around and it's built over time. You're not going to go meet an investor and meet with someone and just, they're going to be like, yeah, I'll work with you right off the bat. It's going to be a process where you got to build the relationship with them provide value to them, send them deals, you know, provide them referrals, invite them to events, you know, build the value in that relationship because there are a bunch of agents out there. There's a bunch of people that say they'll do one thing and then they'll do something else. And so um, that's foundationally, it's like relationship based and then all the other things built on top of it in terms of it's not emotional, it's financial. We're helping them get to their goal. And then there's more deals that come come through working with investors. So yeah. Well, let's talk about today's market for a moment. So uh, in today's environment, higher pricing, uh, the home price gone up, interest rates gone up. Do you find it more challenging to help your meet your investor objective? Because, you know, when we're looking to buy property for investment, um, it's cash flow. It could be tax write-off. It could be appreciation. But... Today, environments is not really priming us for those things. Maybe just the tax write-off. So, what do you find in that? You know, what do you think about my comment? Yeah, no, I think I mean it's all true because you know exactly. You know, you know exactly what you're doing. You're active in the market, 
Um, the deals have absolutely changed. You know, I've, since I got in the business eight years ago, I mean, I just think about parts of town where we'd go out and put buy properties, put properties under contract for sixty or seventy thousand dollars, like out on the east side of Houston, Pasadena, Channel View, like sixty, seventy, eighty grand. Uh, went in the air via at that time was like a hundred and thirty, hundred and forty. Those homes have doubled in value. Like I'm seeing people wholesale deals in those areas now at the old ARVs that, you know, we would put on a property at 130 or 140. There's like wholesale deals that are happening now at that price. So the market's absolutely changed. I mean, there's been a lot of growth um, in the Houston market. I think uh, from a cash flow standpoint, um, a lot of my investors, it is about recalibrating that. It's like, hey, if you can make a couple hundred bucks a month, that's great because you're in this for the long haul. You're in this for the growth and the appreciation of the property. Uh, it's one of the great things about being in Houston. You know, in this market, we're still seeing appreciation. Homes are still getting more expensive every day. Homes are still increasing in value every day. Uh, so, you know, for us down here, it's definitely a more of an appreciation play than a cash flow play because homes are going to continue to increase in value. I mean, you just look at the typical rental home, which now, you know, anything under $200,000 is most likely a rental, you know, and that's creeping up to two fifty and like, 300 range, uh, especially, you know, you're get, however you're going to evaluate it. But um, those homes will continue to appreciate because the median home price in Houston's 450 grand now, which is crazy. And so, you know, there's still going to be equity opportunities to grow. Um, you know, I think the biggest challenge uh, that I'm seeing, and I'd love to get your take on it too, is um, the insurance. Like whoever solves the insurance problem, is going to make a ton of money because even myself on the home that I own, you know, Houston, we're in a coastal market and the insurance rates have just got absolutely out of, like, it's crazy. Um, and so for a lot of property owners, investors that I'm working with, um, we're definitely looking more interior to the west side of town, to the north side of town, farther away from the coast where the rental rates, you know, are still high. Um, but more importantly, the insurance isn't as crazy. I mean, any of the coastal properties, like the the homeowners insurance rates are just so wild. Uh, so, and if, you know, some investors will, they'll choose to go without it, which is kind of a crazy thing. Uh, but, you know, the market on the insurance side is just getting absolutely crazy. So I don't know if you have any thoughts on that, but yeah, I think people just have to recalibrate and adjust their frame of reference. Not a cash flow play, it's an equity play. And, you know, the market's always changing. So um, still, now's the time to buy. Uh, best time to play in a tree was 20 years ago. The next plus, best time is today. Uh, so now is still a great time. There's still deals on the market to get in. But yeah. I can't disagree with you. The time to buy is now, right? It's always. It, it, I, I would not say to go buy one where you will lose money. But if you can get in and not hurt, don't get not get hurt, then there's the time to buy. Um, it's so interesting you talk about insurance because I was just looking into that my own, myself. Like maybe it's, maybe it's time to explore insurance. <laughs> you know, because I always want to uh, solve problems. Whatever it is that I do, I want to be a, a problem solver. So this insurance space right now is crazy. But I th also think that that's one of the factors that makes it even harder um, to, to build rental, portfo uh, rental portfolio in today's uh, environment. Because, like, I have one that just came vacant, a rental I bought years ago, right? The rent is 1700 but the retail price is 210 220 So if you use a 1% rule, it, it, it's out. And, and, and that's not adding the, you know, tax and insurance and all of that in it. So I think for the first time here in some area here in Houston, the rent has not caught up to the, the appreciation of the market. And that makes it really challenging um, to buy, to build, to add rental portfolio, um, unless it's for tax write-off purpose. You know, you got too much money, you want to get in, you know, that's, never hurt to get into real estate <laughs> yeah it's true well righty so as we are wrapping up here um 
what's what's that something fun that Ben does outside of real estate? <laughs> something fun that I do outside of real estate? Well, um, my calling is at the intersection of faith and business. So anything that involves that intersection, like just lights me up, I'm super excited uh, about that. Um, and you know, the other thing for me is uh, my girls, my family. So uh, anytime I get to spend with them, that's why real estate's a massive blessing. Flexibility in my schedule uh, where I can drop them off, pick them up. We can go do things during the week. Uh, so uh, yeah, everything revolves around my girls right now, our family. Uh, so just enjoying that time, everybody that I talk to, you know, they're like, time goes by too quick. They're going to be old and grown and things will change. So just doing everything I can to enjoy the time that I've got with them. So uh, yeah, vacation trips, little things, day trips here and there. Uh, it's what I love doing as well. And just grateful real estate allows for that opportunity uh, to do that without having to worry about a boss or asking for vacation time or all that nonsense. Yeah. So you are in your 40, I'm guessing? I'm 43. Yep. All right. So what would 43-year-old Ben tell 18-year-old Ben? And you got to tell it in a way that your 18-year-old would accept it because we know how we were in, when we were young. We know everything and we don't want to hear anything. It's a good question. Um, I think the biggest, let's see, there's two things I would uh, focus on. Uh, one would be communication. So just get really good at communicating with people, especially around sales, business development, like continue to commit to that skill. Um, because it really flows into everything, um, and then really become more real, um, more relationship focused, just have play a longer game in terms of networking, mentoring. I mean, I've, my neighbor down the street, uh, he's a UT super sharp you know, young guy in school. And I'm just like, build relationships, build relationships with your students, you know, your other colleague, people you're going to school with, and more importantly, build relationships with the teachers. Uh, cause if you're going to school or you're even in high school, it's like those relationships can be very important in terms of gathering insight, wisdom, mentorship, stuff like that. So, um, do that. And then, you know, I don't know, I think college is interesting now. Uh, I would, I would encourage anybody to just start pursuing entrepreneurial en endeavors. Real estate's a great place to do it, especially, you know, straight out. So, uh, that's kind of the three things I would recommend I would focus on building your communication skills, especially around sales, business development, focus on building relationships, and then get into entrepreneurship, especially in real estate, is a great place to go. All right, Ben, if somebody listens to this podcast and they love to get in touch with you, how do they do that? Yeah, the best place to track me down is on social media. So either on Instagram or YouTube, you go to at Benjamin Deal. That's B-E-N-J-A-M-I-N-D-E-A-L. Uh, so that's the at, at on Instagram and YouTube. Also, if you want to shoot me a text, call me 832-835-0558, 832-835-0558. Uh, so you can reach out to me directly if you'd like. Very few people do anyway, so that's why I always put it out there. All right. Well, thank you so much. I think we, uh, thanks for coming on. Uh, you have provided a lot of value to our audience uh listener out there today in my opinion so thank you oh thank you always grateful thanks me